the fourth in the series of the Wave Sound and Light Note series. Today we're going to speak, start speaking of light. So light, there's two characteristics we need to know for light. Um, these you know, go back to the first set of wave characteristics. So a wave can either be mechanical or electromagnetic, and light waves are electromagnetic. Um, and then it can be either transverse or longitudinal. And these are transverse. So transverse meaning as the energy travels up the page in this, or in this direction, the disruption in the electric and magnetic field is perpendicular to the energy transfer. That's what it means to be transverse. And electromagnetic means that it does not need a medium to travel through. Now it can travel through media such as water or air, but it also can travel here from the sun. So it doesn't need media to travel through. This is the electromagnetic spectrum from the reference table. Please note that all of these electromagnetic spectrums, so radio wave, microwaves, infrared, light, ultraviolet, x-rays, and gamma rays, all travel at the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So this is a chart of wavelengths and frequencies. As your wavelengths increase, your frequencies decrease. And the product of wavelength times frequency is this constant, which is the speed of light. Again, all of these things function or travel at the speed of light. Notice when I uh, extrapolate out the light spectrum, I've got violet at the left end of the spectrum. Just to the left of that is ultraviolet. And red at the long wavelength, right to the right of that is infrared. Notice there is a little bit of overlap between microwaves and infrared, so there is some overlap here, but you know there's these general characterizations based on your frequency and or wavelength. So so a couple example problems here. If I have a video laid with a wavelength of 2 times 10 to the 6 meters and it travels at 6 kilometers, um, how long does it take to go 6 kilometers? So we're going to still employ the same wave speeds that we did for sound and we did for basic wave characteristics. So if I want to find how, far does, how long does it take to go 5 kilometers, oh, that should be 6 kilometers. Um, I should have distance over time, so 6 kilometers, 6,000 meters. 3 times 10 to the 8th is the speed, so basically I say 6,000 divided by time. I bring the time up, I bring the 3,000 down, and I get 2 times 10 to the negative 5th seconds. Sorry, that should be seconds. So, uh, what's the frequency of the wave? Now, this is a common re regions question where it says a radio wave. So, you, if you know it's a radio wave, it doesn't tell you in the question, but you need to know that it's 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. So. Velocity equals frequency times wavelength. 3 times 10 to the 8th equals frequency times 2 times 10 to the 6th. You simply divide 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 2 times 10 to the 6th. You get 150 hertz. So Doppler effect. We spoke a little bit about Doppler effect when we talked about sound. It's the change in the perceived frequency of the wave because of the relative motion between the source and the observer. Well, light waves or electromagnetic waves also experience the Doppler effect. So most of our universe we have stars that are traveling away from our planet. So when they travel away from us we get every time they let out a wave those wave fronts are are a little bit farther away from each other than if they were the stationary star. So the, the light that comes to us at Earth is redshift. And if we look out into the universe, most of the light that we see is redshifted light, which is um, pretty strong evidence that there was a Big Bang, or there, there, that the universe is expanding, and that's further evidence that there was a Big Bang, bang at one place, one point. Um, occasionally, we can see blue-shifted uh, light, and that's when you get a higher frequency or a lower wavelength. Additionally, the same technology of Doppler shift can help for radar, whether that's a radar clocking um, a car or a radar, radar clocking a baseball. So if I can send out electromagnetic radiation and it comes back with a shorter wavelength, that means that the uh, ball is moving towards me and I can actually use the shift in wavelength to calculate the speed that the ball is moving. This also works for uh, like weather systems, like the Doppler 5000 weather system. Not only can you tell how far away the clouds are, but um, how fast they're moving towards you. So one of the big themes for this unit is what happens when waves interact with matter. And we've already talked about a couple things, but we're going to talk about a couple other things that happen when waves interact with matter. And then we're going to circle back at the end and kind of just review <clears throat> all the different possibilities here. So one of the things is polarization.
You probably heard polarization probably when it talks about sunglasses. So when you have light, light comes in all the all directions. So some goes up down, some goes left right, some goes side side, some some goes side side. Well, what a polarizer is is basically a physical fence or physical barrier with certain slits that are aligned that only let one type of light through. So as this light goes through here, if I have horizontal orient orientation of my slits, the only light that gets through is horizontal light. So um, what, why this is helpful is much of the light that's reflected off water or snow comes up with a horizontal orient or orientation. If I want to knock out that specific orientation of light because I have plenty of light from the sky, I can have my polarizers in my sunglasses that are going to be horizontal. So, um, I'm sorry, the, the polarizers are going to be vertical. So if I have the vertical polarizers, that knocks out all of that unnecessary glare. So um, I'm going to go further here. So if I look at, so again, this is a similar uh, similar view. I've got light in all, all directions coming through here. I've got horizontal polarizers first. And now let's talk about double polarization. So if only after the first polarizer, if only horizontal light gets through, if I put a second polarizer in a vertical orientation, that blocks out all light. This is a pretty cool demo at school. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I'm going to see it for the rest of the year. So um, if you ever want to take sunglasses and see if they're polarized, you can basically take two different pairs and hold the lens of one at a 90 degree angle to the lens of the other. If you can't see through, then you can know you're buying polarized sunglasses. So that's one way to check yourself in the, in the shop. So the next one we're going to talk about is diffraction. Diffraction is when I get waves that then spread out through, um, I'm sorry, waves that come through a barrier and interact with matter and then they spread out around the edges of that barrier. Um, what happens is when you get energy, so I had a little bit of energy that came through this gap and then that energy spread out. So I get less wave um, action through here, but I do get wave action as it spreads out. Um, I get uh, areas of constructive and de destructive interference, and we'll talk about that moving forward with better diagrams. Um, lastly, this is very helpful, these diffraction patterns, to identify different um, elements through spectral emission. And we'll talk a lot about that in the, in the last unit of study this year, not in the waves unit. So wave fronts, so if I've got waves, I've, they've got a certain wavelength. They go through here. The wavelength doesn't change. The distance between wave front to wave front, as it goes through here, that should stay constant. But again, the energy is dispersed because what was this little area now covers these bigger areas. And obviously, it's a little bit weaker over here than it is straight through. Well, if I have two sets of slits, a slit here and a slit here, I've got two waves. I've got a wave here, and I've got a wave here. Now, we spoke about the interaction between wave pulses. If I have two pulses that are up, and they interfere, I get what I call constructive interference. So if I take this wave, this is the first wave, this is the second wave, this is the first wave, this is the second wave. Well, at this junction right here, I have the crest from the top wave and a crest from the bottom wave interfering. And therefore, I'm going to have constructive interference, so this would be a bigger wave. Here, I'll have constructive interference or a bigger wave. Here, I have the trough of both waves, and I get destructive interference, I'm sorry, I still get constructive interference, but it's constructive interference in a negative um, amplitude. So anywhere up through here, I get constructive interference, as opposed to these red dots. On the red dot, I've got the crest of the top wave and the trough of the bottom wave. So these cancel each other out. So I get an area of relatively flatness. So up here, I get high amplitude. Here, I get no amplitude or lower amplitude. Here I get high amplitude, and then here I get no amplitude. So I get alternating bands of light, dark, light, dark, or high wave, low wave, high wave, low wave. Or if it's for light, I get alternating bands of light, dark, light, dark. So again, constructive interference manifests itself differently, whether it's just a, a physical wave, whether it's a sound wave, or whether it's a light wave. So again, here's an example of constructive, or single, single, um, slit diffraction. Here's an example of double slit diffraction. And again, you see these patterns here. This middle pattern is constructive interference, and right next to it, I get destructive interference, constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive, and alternating bands. Um, even a, an obstacle like this, where you have a physical barrier, you get diffraction around this top edge, you get diffraction around this bottom edge, 
and these two waves interfere with areas of constructive, destructive, constructive. Um, one of the most famous experiments for this is Young's double slit. You know, he sent light waves through two barriers, and again, you can see the screen here, band of bright, dark, bright, dark, you know, bright is constructive, destructive, constructive, destructive. Now, not only do you get bands of bright, dark, bright, dark, you get a little bit more intensity in the middle band. So the middle band here is going to be a little bit higher or a little bit brighter or louder or higher. Then I get cancellation and then I get the next maxima, it's called, and then another minima and then another maxima. So here are the equations for this. We're not going to look at the equations this year, um, but, you know, the equations are, you know, the D is the, the distance between the slits and the angle is the angle at which the uh, waves reach out at. The M is the number of the maxima and the wave, the wavelength of the light. So that's it for today. Thank you.